is, is an individual sport from track and field. And uh, it's some of the things that Warren was, was talking about, building that uh, team culture, something that's really important, even maybe more important with an individual sport. There, in my sport, it's a stopwatch or a tape measure. You know every time you compete how well you've done. You can't do it if you've got a bit of a niggle. You can't hide away on a team. It's, you know whether you've performed up to standard or not because of the tape measure or the stopwatch. It makes it really hard. So, um, and things are not always going to be at the top. You're not always going to be there. Your performance is not going to be there. You're not going to feel that well all the time. So you have to be enjoying it. You have to enjoy it. So we have a lot of fun. And uh, the middle distance runners uh, look over at our sprint group all the time and say, wow, these sprinters, look at them. They're sitting down, they're talking again, or telling jokes, or laughing. The, there are other reasons for that, and that's sprinters need to have big rest between the efforts. You know, the energy systems have to replace the oxygen and not build up any, any time. So that's really important. Some of the things I put down about, uh, and I wrote some notes because I knew I was speaking third, so I thought some things may well be covered or, or not covered. Firstly, my philosophy about coaching is it's about the athlete, the sports person, not the coach at all. And as Warren uh, talked about, he's got so much out of being a coach, he just loves it, same as me. Now, 40 years coaching, so I started when I was about two. Uh, <laughs> and, um, and, and I do love it. And, you know, I can keep doing it because uh, Sandy, my wife, uh, supports me doing it. If I didn't have that, that would be hard. Lots of things helping me do that. But I've had so much out of it, and the more I've put into it, the more I've got out of it. But it has to be athlete-focused, <coughs> athlete-centred. I'll touch a bit about the high-performance stuff that I do right at the end, because then that's the battle, to keep it <coughs> athlete-focused, not all the other people who are in your whole team, your support team, can lead things astray, so that the coach really has to keep things on the keel, so it is all about the athlete. We lost. So as a teacher, my background is in teaching and, and uh, as a principal too, so I coached lots of different sports and, and enjoyed that. If you're in a, a small country school, a school of two teachers, um, or in a, a big um, school in, in Dillian here too, you still have to help out with all the sports. And so whether it be from badminton, Football, rugby, rugby league, uh, athletics, mini ball, hockey, all the time for that. And as Warren was talking about, yes, yeah, some skill and some helping there, but mainly just enjoyment. I tried to stay away from doing anything with the athletic team because I probably would have started coaching more, too much. And uh, so I tried to get my other staff uh, members to help out with that because um, I think coaching uh, kids at a young age, you know, I have real concerns about that. And to hear from Warren talk about the enjoyment and talk about the age and stage of development and when are the, the good windows for developing skills, etc. It's the same in all sports, all codes right across. Um, youngsters can get on uh, YouTube and they can read either in books or on the internet, and they can pick up all the information. They can teach themselves how to long jump, how to kick a ball, how to do all these things really well, because there are really good examples there. But if they start picking up too many ideas from too many places, it becomes a, a real muddle, and some of the really good things they're doing might be counteracting each other. So the coach's role can be helping the athletes develop by a well thought out program putting the ideas in, in the one direction. How do I get involved in this crazy game? Well, it just happened. It's, uh, uh, one of the teachers at my school who was a very good coach, uh, he was actually an Olympic selector at the time, and he said, Brent, I've got this chap I want you to coach. And I, didn't have, I had no idea what to do about coaching. And uh, Audrey said to me, look, just be enthusiastic and just encourage. And that's that's where I started. So he did a warm up with me. <coughs> I knew how to do a warm up. We did a warm up together and I encouraged, <coughs> I was there every time I said I would be there. And then I went to courses and just started to pick up the information. And it's just been a roller coaster. 
you know, uh, lots, lots of times, uh, <clears throat> think, oh man, this is getting, mm, that's not me, oh yes, I really like that, nodding my head and learning, well, learning that, and uh, yeah, lifelong learning, and that's great. Coaching, it's a people thing. It's a people thing. So I've got to remember when that, in your night, typing away on the, uh, on the computer, setting your programs. Okay, that's good, but then when you get down on the track, when you're working with your athletes, with your teams, you have to make changes. Otherwise, I can just learn it all off a book or out of the computer. It's a coach on the spot. So it's a people thing, and therefore you have to treat them the way you want to be treated. You've got to treat people well. I've heard really good examples uh, already. But, you know, um, you would have seen on, on the TV, <coughs> now they get into, co into uh, changing rooms and you see a coach <coughs> yelling and swearing, cursing and slamming their fists. And a, a big performance. And maybe they're doing it that, you know, it's performance, but that's not the way to treat anybody. And so I, I don't like being treated that way, talked to in that kind of way, so I don't think you should do it. You should be punctual and you should expect your athletes to be punctual, and if, they, if they're not going to be there, they should in this day and age, should be a text on whatever, and I'll help them, I'll get any other time of the day or night, I'll be with them to fit it in. Um, that's really important, that, you know, no put downs, no sarcasm, uh, no matter who they are. And it's developing skills um, and feedback. Feedback is the main thing I do as a coach, daily, just giving feedback. In this day and age, yes, you've got video and you've got heaps of applications, and even free applications are wonderful, and programs on the computer that can help, but as a coach, you've got to be able to see it with your naked eye. If you had to get those three or four steps back with technology before you saw what was happening, uh, that's a bit of a worry. It should be giving the feedback there and then. Not two days later after, oh, I've had a chance to look at that uh, video now and uh, uh, you should have done this. While well, they're walking <coughs> back between efforts, to, it's giving out feedback. And that's the time when you can be, uh, have a bit of a joke about it and talk about things and be, uh, just being personable with them, I think is really important. And that's even uh, from a young athlete, uh, right from the start. And so uh, part of my philosophy is building them as a person so it's not just to run fast, etc. Uh, it's then to know themselves and to develop as a person, to keep trying, etc. So, you know, there's a bit of sports sight right from the start. <clears throat> and there's a, also knowing about the whole technique of the event, because we're working on that daily. But, um, yeah, everyone gets nervous. So how do you overcome that? Just start your warm-up. We talk about what the warm-up is. And the reality is, the warm-up, getting warm, etc., Look, research is not cut and dry on whether you actually need to do that or, or whatever, okay? Um, best thing about it is just getting the head ready for your warm-up. But it's very good for not looking at any, not looking at opposition. Gee, they always look good. You just get into your stuff and you've got going and, uh, and you're starting doing the right things, hopefully, in your warm-up for it. You're learning by mistakes. I wish kids played cards more often nowadays. You learn how to lose in cards really quickly, don't you? And someone loses like every two or three minutes, don't they? Whereas nowadays, you're on the computer, if you start losing a game, you just, oh, damn it. Start again, don't you? you know, just, just start it again. Just start it again. It's not going the way I thought. Start that damn game again, you know? They don't go through to the stage where they've lost. You know, they try a few logical steps to see the way. But in cards, you just lose all the time, and, and no one smashes the table. Well, it doesn't happen all the time. People smash the table, yell and swear and whatever, because they're not going to play cards with you if, you, if you, that's how you perform. So I actually like things like card games and things. And track and field, <coughs> someone's going to win, and someone's not going to win every time. You're not always going to get a uh, first equal. And that can happen, you know, we can have two athletes who are right at the top of the game, the best in New Zealand, both going to Commonwealth Games, and they train together, they do starts together, everything together, and every effort they do, they're comparing each other all the time. And so the coach has to sort out that and work with them on a positive way. And so that's really difficult, because sport is about winning. But I don't think dwelling on winning 
is going to help you. You stand on a chair and you're training it. Day. Oh, I'm thinking about winning the gold medal and I can, <laughs> I can picture it, the bloody medal around my neck and I'm on the dais and yeah, and I'm the best. I can picture myself coming out of the box and, you know, I'm going to do 10 seconds. I'm going to run 10 seconds for the 100 meter. All that's not helping you. How are you going to run 10 seconds? By exploding out of the blocks, by good reaction, by push, 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 by then opening out and stepping over and lengthening the stride and then keep the stride rate at the end. Lots of different things in your race plan. <coughs> so it's talking about and training for that, those skills and dwelling on all those bits. There's always something to work on and improve and improve, and so that's really important. One of the first uh, big meets I took Chris Donaldson to was uh, here in Dunedin, it was the National Champs. And the powers that be had decided they were going to put out a documentary on this, on this National Champs, and they'd pre-chosen <coughs> the six <coughs> star athletes of the meeting. And there was uh, another athlete who was the second best in the world, over 100 and 200, Mark Cadell from, from Christchurch, who was there. And he was uh, the big opposition for Chris. And uh, it was really distracting because everyone was aware of all these TV cameras making this big thing and all these interviews with these athletes. And Chris and I just uh, sat down and we, we looked at him. And I could see he was really nervous. He was, he was just thinking about bloody camera over there and Mark Cadell. And uh, we just talked about, you'd like that camera on you? And he just talked away from that about how it's going to get, how you're going to run well. Not just get angry about him and therefore perform better. We had to think about his race and all the things he could do well. And we, we talked about that right through his career um, and used it a lot of times. Sportsmanship. Do you talk about that? Yeah. Just every time you're training, if, oppor if opportunities come up, that's really important. You need to talk to them about thanking the officials. Really, really important. You know, it's hard to get officials, referees, umpires, all the administrators, so we need to uh, keep that going all the time. And so that is something that uh, I try and make sure when we're, when we're working with each other, we all have our jobs to do to put this away, get this out, and it's that culture of thanking even the others in your squad for all the things they've done. I think you need to start that. As a coach, there's uh, just a bit of advertising that's gone on, that uh, sideline behaviour, you're going to come up against that. Parents and, and others are going to give you, give you some grief. And as a coach, you're going to have to be in there and be the umpire and the referee at times, and you're going to get grief. There's some good resource coming out from Sport O now, it's in the school, or some posters and other stuff uh, about really good sideline behaviour. It's really good. But it, but it comes back to what a coach is doing daily with, with, their, with their group. And if at all it is on, on <coughs> nasty, win at all cost kind of philosophy, we're going to get ugly sideline stuff. We, we're just going to get it. Yeah, age, I left out the whole bit on uh, age and stage of development, etc. Uh, there is a, uh, something that I read once, and I never wrote down uh, uh, who, who um, a name here, but it was uh, something I've just put in my book, and that's to, to value character as well as ability. And uh, I think of uh, two young girls in my squad now. One has all the ability in the world. She is outstanding. Probably, probably the best athlete I've ever worked with. Her mate has got the best work ethic, uh, ethics and attitude and everything at the moment, and I wish they both had a mix of both, um, but it's, I've got to make sure that I give as much feedback and encouragement to someone who is not going to win that race, but is just ideal, and she's so brilliant for all the others in that whole group of the younger ones there, uh, and so uh, it's really important that I keep that going. Does it get easier at high performance? <coughs> no, it gets harder. <coughs> Lots more demands. It's harder because you have then someone coming in with strength and conditioning. You have the nutritionist, you have the physio, you have all the sports med people, and they all have 
fantastic information, fantastic expertise, and ways of things that should change, and it's to balance all that. And the, the only way I can balance that is go back to is athlete centred. It's all about the athlete. And that's my whole um, way of solving all those indecisions and decisions that have to be made. So that's just a wee bit on my philosophy for coaching. Yes, sir. Thanks very much. Cheers.